Now we're at the time of Cholam Oed, so it's time to discuss a little bit about uh, the time of the year, what we have to do. Number one, uh, we start to do Moed HaTal. After the first day of Pesach, on Musaf already, we start to do Moed HaTal. And it's very important not to miss this, right? Not to make a mistake and say Moed HaGeshem. Because if you say Moed HaGeshem, you have to go back and pray again. That's what you got to do. But how does that work, right? What's the, what's the system? The way it works is like this. You say, Atak Gibor Le'onam Adonai, right? And you say, you said, Mashim Baruch Moed HaGeshem, okay? If you made a mistake like this, you can just go back and, if you remember, you made a mistake, you go back to Atak Gibor and start again. Atak Gibor Le'onam Adonai, again, one more time. And you say, Moed Atal, like this. Okay, that goes until the end of the bracha, until you get to the end. So once you say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Right now you want to say mechayehem etim, but you remember now. Oh, I said, I said, uh, I said, Mashi Baruch Moed Hashem. I made a mistake. So what do you do now? You already said Baruch Ata Hashem. So what do you do? Over there you can do Lamadeni Chukecha. Mm-hmm. What is this? It's a pasuk, you know. Baruch Ata Adonai Lamadeni Chukecha. It's a pasuk like this, you know, Tehilim. So you're making the bracha into a pasuk. In this way, it won't be bracha lavatala. This is the reason why you're doing it this way. So if you do it this way, Baruch Atah Adonai, Then you go back, and again, Atah Gibor, Le'olam Adonai, and Morid Atal. Right? You can do like this, and then continue from there. Go from there and continue. Finish the bracha, continue from there. That's good. But once you already said, Mechayeha Metim, and you die, you remembered, oh, I, did, I said, I said, I said, Borim Morid Ageshen. So what do you do now? Go back to the beginning of the Tefillah, right? Adonai Sefatai Tiftecha. Adonai Sefatai Tiftach. Sefatai Tiftach. Ufi Agid Elatecha. That's what you got to do. Go back to the beginning. There's no other way. Even if you finish the whole Tefillah, right? Ose Shalom Bimamal. Doesn't matter. You remember. Ay, I forgot. Uh, I said Morid Ageshem. You got to go back. Adonai Sefatai Tiftach again. Pray the whole prayer again. So this is the reason why you got to be careful. You know, to make, say the right thing. Uh, what about if he has a doubt? This happens a lot, by the way, you know? You pray, and uh, you get to, Hashiba uh, Shofetenu, you know, somewhere in the middle? And you say, Ay, did I say Moed Atal or Moed Ageshem? What did I say? Ah, I don't remember. Safek. You know? Vapros, right? I don't know what to do. So what, what do you do? What do you do in a case like that? So Chachamim said, so you have to go back and pray again. What's the reason why? Why do you have to pray again? Because you, you go according to your habit. Your habit was already to say, Mashi Baruch Moed Ageshem. Like already for six months you've been doing it. So therefore, since you've been doing it for a long time, that's already your habit. So probably that's what you did. From your habit, you did the same thing as you did before. So therefore you have to go back and pray again. So when does this change, by the way? If you do already for 30 days, you know, you say, Moed Atal, for 30 days, 90 times already. Each, each prayer, each, each day has three, three tefillot, right? So 30 times 3, 90. If you already said 90 times, Morid Atal, now if you have a doubt, you don't have to go back and do again. Why? Because you probably now said like your new habit already. It's, it's very new habit. It's Kavua. One month is Kavua. Tfiut. This is, the, this is the halakha. So be careful about that. Also we're saying Barechenu uh, now, right? Not Barechaleinu. And same thing also over there. If you said... The ten talum atali bracha, right? And you continued like this. You, you have to go back and pray again. You cannot do that because you have to do. You have to say barachenu now. It's really not the time for rains. So why is it, by the way, the Chazal are so afraid? What's the big problem? You know. Okay, so I mentioned the rain. I asked for the rain. What's the big deal? What? 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 Uh, what, what is my sin? So you know what the answer is. The answer is the Chazal say that after this time already, after time of Pesach, after time of Nisan. Already the rain is not harm, it's harmful already. It's not beneficial. It's harmful. It does damage, you know? So before, because of that, especially in Eretz Israel, by the way, that's where the biggest problem is, over there. The rain in the summer is not good in Eretz Israel. It's not, it's not good for the land. So therefore, right, you, that's why you, we don't want you to mention rain or to pray for rain, because you're asking for something which is harmful. This is the whole thing. So that's why also you have to be careful about Barachenu now. Make sure you don't say Barachaleinu. If you did... You have to go back and pray again. So now, what happens like this, okay? What happens if, he, let's say, right, um, 
he prayed in Arvit last night, you know, and then he came in the morning, he remembered, ah, I don't know what I did, you know, that I do more the Tal or more the I don't remember. Again, right, Vapros, you know, Safek, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I have a doubt. So what do you do? You should do two Shachrit, you know, because that one, we assume now, you didn't do it yet 90 times, so you, we assume you said the wrong one, because of your habit. So therefore, you got to do two times Shachrit. What does that mean two times Shachrit? You do Korbanot, Pesuk Yedazima, Tiyat Shema, and then you do Amidah, right? and then another Amidah, two times. Two times Amidah. You know? So, you know what you can do, by the way, if, if, the, if the rabbi will allow you, what you can do is, you can go to Bishliach Tzibur, you know, and say the Chajat Hashat. So then you did two times Amidah, right? That's going to be good. You know, one time you did quietly, and another time you did Chajat Hashat, that's two times Amidah, two times Shachrit. So you did good, but you can do it also this way, if you, if you want to do That's That's also another thing. Another thing we have to understand is, but what about Chol Amoyed, right? Chol Amoyed also has its rules. There are rules, you know, there are certain melachot, there are certain labors which are not allowed to do in Chol Amoyed. Some of them are allowed, some of them are not allowed. What about driving your car? Yeah, no problem, you can drive your car, you want to go here, you want to go there. Nobody's telling you nothing. Why? What's the reason why? Because you need this for the Moed. You know, to go here, to go there, to go to the store, to go to the bank, whatever it is you need, you, can, you have to go, you need it's, it's a need, so you have to, you go, no problem. But there are some things, for instance, like writing, you know, like Kutiva. <laughs> so there, there are, some, there are some questions about this. You're not allowed to, the, the rabbi said, you shouldn't write on Chol HaMoed. You know, but it depends on how you write and what you write. It depends on what it is. So I'll give you an example, right? The kind of writing you're not allowed to do on Chol HaMoed is like professional writing. What is a professional writing? Like a sofer, you know? Writing a sefer Torah, writing tefillin, writing mezuzot, things like this. It's professional writing. So things like this, the Chachamim said, on Chol HaMoed, you're not allowed to do. You know? So you're not allowed to write tefillin on, on Chol HaMoed. You're not allowed to write mezuzot. You're not allowed to write Sefer Torah. Unless the community has no Sefer Torah, you know? They have nothing. So then you can write for the community, for the Keilah. This you can do. But if they have, like Baruch Hashem, we have, every, every Keilah has 10 Sefer Torah, 20 Sefer Torah, you know, they have too much as it is, you know, they don't need so much. So they're, they're trying to give away to some people, you know, they're here, because they have no room for the Sefer Torah. So they're trying to give to other people, to other synagogues, because they, you know, they have no place to put them. So we have, Prabhu Hashem, plenty of Sefer Torah. So we don't need that for, for, for Chol HaMoed. So there's no reason to do that. But what about just regular writing, you know, scribble? Like, let's say I want to write a check, you know, or I want to sign a receipt for my credit card, or something like this, you know? Or uh, I want to, let's say, you uh, write a letter to my friend, you know, some, something, a note you know, to my friend. Am I allowed to do that? So some people say, oh, you know, if you want to write, you should do it with your left hand, you know, because it's shinui. You know, the truth is that there are, if, you, if you're just writing regular scribble, writing, regular writing, signing a check, and this, if you need it for the holiday, there's two different opinions over here, the Rambam and the Rashba, right? One says, one says if you need it for the holiday, you can do it. So if you need a check to write for the holiday, to buy something, you can, you can write a check, no problem. Use the regular, regular, write the regular way. Also to write, to, to sign a receipt or whatever it is, anything like this. If it's, if it's a need for the Moed, you're allowed to write. Another thing is also, if it's going to cause you, have said me if it's going to cause you loss. Right? Let's say if you don't write it, it's, you're going to lose money, you know? Because let's say uh, you have to balance your checkbook, you know, make sure you know how much you got in there. So, you know, you don't, your checks don't start coming back, returning, you know? Your checks are returning, all kinds of things like this. So because it, it's going to cause you a loss if you don't write it, so you're allowed to write it. So th- for these two reasons, a person is allow- allowed to write on Kholam Moed. One is to, 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 for the need for the Moed, and one is also Hepset Merube, if you know, it shouldn't cause you to lose money. Things like this. People are always asking me, you know, about the Kholam Moed. You know what it is, right? People like to go, they like to go shopping, you know, Kholam uh, Moed. They want to do some recreation a little bit, you know, shopping here, shopping there. So... The question is, are you allowed to buy uh, new clothes, you know, on Cholam or not? This is the question, you know? Uh, so the truth is, you know, that if you don't need it, and if you're not going to wear it for the Moed, then you're not allowed to buy. You know? But if you need, a new, let's say, a new suit, right? Yeah. Let's say your suit got ripped up, Shem Rachem, right? It got ripped or something, got damaged. You don't have a suit to wear. If you have another suit, okay, wear another suit. But if you don't have another suit, so then you're allowed to go to the store and to buy a new suit. You can, you can or buy a new shirt, whatever. You don't have a shirt. If you, if you need a shirt, you can buy for the Moed. But if you don't need it for the Moed, so then you're not allowed to buy. You know, this is the thing. Same thing. 
But, you know, sometimes, you know, people always ask me, the girl, especially ladies, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, Rabbi, there's a sale now, you know? If I go, <laughs> so, you know, 20% off, right? So if I go now, I'm going to get 20% off. If I go next week, it's going to be 20% more. Mm-hmm. Oh, so can I buy now, you know? So the truth is that there are some poskim allowed us, a bunch of Einstein, you know, he says that, if it's, if it, that's also called have said. You're going, to lo- you're going to lose. If you don't buy now, you're going to lose money. Because if you buy next week, you have to pay more. So it's called have said me You know, whatever. You're losing money there. If it's, you know, something small, no big deal. But if it's something significant, so that means that your person is allowed to go. So if you have a sale like that, where, you know, it's going to end by the end of the holiday, and then you're going to lose money, so you're allowed to go and buy uh, something like that because it's going to cause you a loss. One more thing I'll tell you. We'll do our meat, Bazaar Hashem. Another thing is, you know, what about working? You know, so this is the same thing also with working. The truth is, you know, that if you're a good Jew, if you're a good religious Jew, you know, God bless you, you know, if you're fear Hashem, you really shouldn't work on Cholam You know, try not to work on Cholam You know what I mean? Especially if you're doing well, you have a nice income, you know. So take a vacation on Cholam This is the best thing to do. You know? Twice a year, you know, take a vacation, close your store, close your factory, whatever it is, like close your restaurant, whatever you got. You know, just go and, uh, the, you know, uh, stay, stay home and enjoy, enjoy, the ho- enjoy the holiday. By the way, what is this person supposed to do for the holiday? You know, why, not, why did the Chachamim give us this time of Cholam What's the purpose of it? So you know what it says in Gemara Yerushalmi? The purpose is to learn Torah. That's, that's the purpose, you know? The, the reason why they made Cholam is that we should sit and learn Torah. So therefore it says Rabbi Yochanan in the, uh, in the Gemara Yerushalmi, he says over there, that if I was there, he says, you know, when they made this takana of Cholam I would tell them to cancel it, you know? The Vatel. The Vatel is it. To cancel it. Why cancel it? Because he says, we made Cholam so people should learn Torah. And now what do they do? They go bowling, you know, and miniature golf and, uh, you know, do all kinds of recreation. You know, that's what they do, right? Recreational things. Cholam was not made for recreation. It was made for Torah. That's the thing, you know? So that's what, therefore, Rabbi Yochanan said, if I was there... I would have bottled it because it's better that they should go to work. You know, why, why go to recreation? At least make some money, you know? What's the, what's the point? It would have been better to make money. But anyway, it stayed in this place, right? Whatever it is. So therefore, a person should try to increase Torah study in Cholom That's what it's really for, you know? If you try to do other things, you're missing the point. Because you know, you know why the Chachamim made Cholom The reason why they made it is because most people, right? 90% of the people, they're working all day. So they don't have time to learn Torah every day. You know, because of the job. 12 hours a day they're working. Where do they have time for to learn Torah? So therefore they gave you two weeks out of the year, you know, Pesach and Sukkot. Sit down and learn Torah. This is the whole thing, you know. That's the whole purpose of the Cholamoid. So Hashem should help us, Mr. Hashem, to make the Cholamoid Kadosh and holy. Amen, amen, amen. And, which means Masliach, Malam, Malam. Amen. 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 Amen.